Welcome to RBD1 Wall Destruction. In this lesson, we will start with UVs and assign texture to the wall and fracture it. Also, we will build RBD setup from scratch and talk about importance of some attributes. And I will show you one easy technique to find impact point procedurally. And once we are done breaking the wall, we will try to achieve similar effect using Bullet Shop Solver. And later we will render this in Karma. And if you already know basics of RBD, I will recommend you to watch chapter 14 impact point where I will be talking about procedure approach for impact fracture. So without further ado, let's get started. I will talk about learning approach. If your learning approach is working great, so you can skip this video. I'll talk about those who doesn't have technical or coding background. I can understand when it comes to attribute triangle or warp. It's tough to understand and it's confusing. There are always levels of learning something and here it's okay if you are not able to understand few things you can learn them later in next level. For now you can pass facts or some difficult to note. I'll suggest you to focus on things you find easy to understand and learn them properly like note flow, clear, basic concept. When you become pro in basic things then you can focus on tough things. I will tell you what to do when it comes to tough things and it's really important to achieve some output. You can do one thing in that situation, take a screenshot of it or write in your notepad. So when you are practicing or doing some work and you come to that difficult part, so you can easily open that screenshot in a mobile or somewhere. And tough and advanced things you will learn with experience and more time you invest in practice. And always remember in the end final output matters. So enough talking, let's enter in the world of RBD. We will work in real world scale. To measure size, we will use test character. Let's call him Joey. Let's check his height. Go or node. Click on this I button, it's showing node info and you can see it's showing 1.7 meter and Houdini works in meters so 1.7 meter is equal to 5.5 foot. Now we have something to compare with. Let's create a wall, give it some nice color, it's size indicator. Let's call it wall. I need it to be on the grid so right click on this copy parameter and paste relative reference so the parameter will sync and let's divide by 2 so it will stay on the ground so this wall looks fine to me we will need camera to create flipbook from one angle and go here just new camera so it will ca create camera on that position so this angle looks fine to me yeah. and i will use some shortcuts so let's create them go here click on this plus icon create new shelf let's rename it as shortcuts select nodes you want to create shortcuts from i use null and merge a lots of time so i create shortcuts for them and do check here it should be soft null so we will use it at surface level so to check this here. and apply accept right click over here go to the last step hotkeys double click over here press M so it will create shortcut for it and accept save and same goes for this thing if I use N for it it's already being used so we have to come up with something different shift N will be nice so it's not in use so you can just save this so whenever I use 
M or Shift N, so it will create the shortcuts. And save this file. You can create a new project, but I don't need all these folders. So I'll just do a on desktop create and let's copy it okay. v1 it's saved and we will use dollar heap variable lot and i'll show you what is that going to aliases and variables and it will show a path over here so every time you save this file to another place, it will keep syncing this path. I will use this path to cache all those things, simulation and all. When I copy paste this world destruction, any other drive or something, it will sync this path and read all those caches. Let's hide this node now. And also one more tip I wanted to give you. And this is the first and last time we will use shelf in this tutorial. Let's fracture it. Go to Reaches tab. Pack geometry. And we need crown to collide with. So you can check this why i'm creating this and i'm why i'm showing this thing so when you're practicing you can open two session of foodney in one you will create everything from scratch and if you like forget something you can just check all this node flow from here and while learning just always try to create everything from scratch so See you in the next chapter. Let's rename this wall. Let's add wall texture. For that, we need to UV and wrap of this box. If you are not aware of UVs, and I will show you this example. So we will unwrap some type of layer of this box. and we can paint this using photoshop let's paint this is just for example purpose and we will use this as a texture So we can assign some texture on this box. To unwrap UV of this box, we have to use unwrap UVs. If I middle click on this node, it will show UV. And to check this, go here and we can see this it's uv we can take this into photoshop and we can paint this space bar one it will switch to perspective view let's on the camera and now we need to check texture on this so there is node called quick shade if i connect this it will show me UV grid. I have one seamless texture. So if I use this and we can just change here, we can use any texture to visualize into viewport. I want to scale this texture down. So let's use UV edit. And it won't work. So it's not yet selected anything. S-track icon, so it will take everything. 
and now let's scale this up yeah this looks fine to me and this is our texture save this file and now we will talk about fracture and simulation stuff in this chapter we will talk about fracturing but before that let's understand the concept of rbd so we take the geometry we fracture it and we use rbd solver for final simulation question why we pre fracture this because we have control over fracture shapes there are always different shape with different material so if you are fracturing concrete it has different shape fracture if you are doing glass or wood it has different shape pieces so here we have enough control over it. and for simulation we can use low res geometry for simulation we can swap with higher geometry i will show you how to do that now let's understand the basic concept of fracturing we will talk about one a fracture let's take grid use one a fracture it's asking for geometry to fracture let's connect this it won't work it requires point to fracture for that let's scatter some points on grid so there is scatter node just connect this and i need one only change seed and if i plug it won't do anything let's take two okay it did something and do remember we are testing on open poly so do remember to check this off create interior surfaces pieces by color let's click here okay and smooth shader i don't want to see this file also visualize our point use sphere copy stamp those points you can see them and let's merge them so it will just find this in between and it will fracture if i increase it see it's a one and fracture So this is the basic concept of fracturing thing and this is how Warnay fracture works. In this tutorial we are not using Warnay fracture but we will use material fracture. Let's see that next. Okay so our wall is looking good and it has texture and if you want to switch on of this texture just click over here. And one more thing if you don't want to use this texture then you can just right click texture uv to image and you can give any resolution and you can export it paint it so let's drop material fracture it's asking for geometry and this is also scattering some points and fracturing it and these are the level of fracture if i increase this it will fracture more but we are okay with two levels for now let's disable one and check this let's increase fracture points what it's doing over here let's take the is offset Let's increase the resolution. And I like dark background, so let's do that first. 
dark okay what this rbd material is doing it will scatter point on this in this arbitrary material is adding some noise on this volume so we have that control you can see this it has noise frequency let's copy this paste over here if I increase this you will see now it we have enough points so it's just to randomize the shape but we need this part and let's 50 is fine for us because it's level 1 and let's do same thing here as well it was 5 5 5 all cool and we can increase some scatter from it here and to visualize this we will use exploded view to visualize this fracture so we can just we can imagine how it will look when we fracture this yeah this looks fine Now it's time to add details in it. We are not, we won't use chipping in this, but I can, I will show you what it's doing. So it will add, it will fracture these areas. Let me show you. Let's click enable this chipping. Right? So it will just fracture this uh, on the corners. Now, now let's move to details. I like this option a lot, edge detail. It will just add some noise on these fractured edges. Let's use exploded view to visualize this again. And keep it less smooth shaded. it's looking nice and it has nice resolution but let's increase some resolution over here and also while adding details you, what you can do just for quick visualization you can disable this primer fracture so it will take less time for loading here we can just change some parameters and here we can just test some things one five is okay I think this looks okay to me I, or maybe it's too much of textures uh, maybe 75 and now let's add interior details I want to increase my frequency and what this depth volume voxel is doing it will reduce interior detail on this edge if I increase it if I increase this one so it will just reduce detail on edge but it's fine for me Amp noise amplitude also looks fine uh, looks bit and also we can just reduce a bit we can reduce dial down yeah and now it's time to enable fracture and we may face some problem while like if there is too much tiny pieces 
we may need to reduce noise sometimes but in this scenario in this situation i think it's looking fine we are not able to notice all the details yeah and now we will move to simulation part what is pack geometry let's take simple example over here and we will pack it in this box press w for the wireframe and once we pack it's like if in real life also it's easier to carry things right so same concept we can use here but instead these are items individual things but here if i take some geometry let's go to the eye you can see here it has points primitives vertices polygons these are the four items over here it will pack these items in one point let me show you let's put out so we can see this instantly and to keep refreshing and pin this over now let's put a pack See, I have told you it packed everything in one, and we can use this for simulation. And also one more advantage of this pack geometry. Let's copy. Let's check the memory. Okay, I'm just copying this. See this. it's taking really less data if i unpack it see it's taking almost 4 mb so this was a basic concept of pack geometry and there are it's not just packing all those things it's storing lots of uh, data as well let's already one so i want to keep it simple now let's go to our fracture and i want to cast this fracture geometry so whenever i open this hudni file it shouldn't cook every time and there are almost three outputs and i want to cache them all so let's use this file cache okay it will go to this heap roller heap remember it will just sync this path so let's create one folder name cache and dollar os what dollar dollar os will do it will use this name over here and create folder and we are going to cache this for one frame only there will be no frame so let's current frame and let's name it wall fracture it's called camel cache so it it has second word is in capital okay now i want to cache all this thing at once how i can do that so there is rbd pack also it's doing nothing it will just pack this into one and now let's cache this and remember to this load from disk on it's stored in file cache so whenever i open this file it won't cook every time shift l and also same rbd unpack now it's cached and i wanted to show you few things over here this one is high res geometry and this rbd material also create low res geometry which is called proxy geometry let's check that it's really light and it's easy to simulation let's check this here and we will pack this using assemble node
spec geometry. See, it has almost 500 pieces. They are stored in 500 points. And whenever you want to check this, what this spec geometry is doing, so you can extract point also from that. Just use this add node, connect it, and delete geometry, but keep the point. So you can see this. It's all packed inside one point, which is in centroid. In next chapter, I will show you the importance of name attribute and we will talk about what is attribute and what's the importance of them. So here I, will, I want to talk about attributes and what's the importance of them. Let's take the example of the joey. Hide other objects. So you can see this here. He has a character and obviously he has a name. Joey. So Joey is name attribute. He has position and where he is standing. All of this data stored in attributes. And if I go in detail, so let's uh, closer look at its hair. So color of his hair and length of his hair, it will be stored in the attributes. And how to check attributes? Just middle click on here. See, I have told you. It's normal position UVs. It's all stored in attributes. And these are the groups. And I want to assign him a name. So for that, we can use point triangle to create name. But we will use assemble. So this will also create name. You can check this. But out prefix. Let's connect this and name him Joey. Now if I click on an assemble, it will show me yeah he has name. But he has seven unique names. Why it's it's showing seven unique names? If I use explorer view. Oops, this must explode view is fine and I don't want to convert this into 18 plus content so of this explode view. He is wearing cloth also so it has different name. And how do I check this? I can see here its name but how do I see that attribute? So for that we use geometry spreadsheet. For now it's showing position and normal and I want to we are here at points but we where is, where is the name attributes? It's in primitives. So let's switch to prim. And I know there are lots of things it's showing. So let's just highlight name attribute. So let's show you. So different part has different number. And in RBD simulation, name is very important. And it's all about name only. And I hope it's clear what's the attributes and how we can visualize them. And these are name attribute Houdini can read it, but there are other attributes you want to create, you can create for. Like I want to create one data for him and let's see how to create that. Okay, so here I'm going to use point triangle, but don't be afraid, it's just for example point triangle and let's connect this let's keep over here and keep refreshing and I want to create one attribute like what software he knows okay so Joey knows as it's for string it's okay we'll use software sorry is equal and we need inverted comma and let's say he is he knows Houdini if I if I control click oh yes you can see this he knows one software which is Houdini and let's visualize that and every time we don't have to go over here we can in fact split this Pen. and now we can go to viewer inspector we can go to inspector and
and check at least yeah it's there he knows who this software right i hope you are clear with the name concept and now let's go for rbd let's rename this pact and one more thing it's recreating this name attribute avoid recreating this name attribute and try to use this name which is coming from material fracture okay so let's check of this create name attribute i will share few things about this name attribute in some time so let's build rbd setup take another wall pack and you can use this top which is generally the preset create but i don't want to create on object level i want to create it at top level so let's do that top network and we will rename it as rbd sim give it some highlight color which we can notice let's strip this and clean our network use shift s to round the edges and i want to keep this below here yeah and also it's time to rename this rbd sim let's give it some green color and now let's dive inside dot network and here we will take pack object rename it is wall copy this path and paste over here and we can see over here and i'm going to talk about all those things in a minute but before that we will need solver to run this let's use rigid body and we will need gravity force also and let's just click yeah it's working we will need ground also merge let's give it a uh, brown color and go to the front view first i want to talk about few things while using ground so there is no gap between this and in some cases it gives problem so for safer side do this so it will create slightly gap between that right and let's check the simulation now and this is rigid body solver and there are some other there is rbd solver also but we will just use bullet only we use on mostly bullet only for our for destruction scenes it's quick and give faster result and let's go back to here and one more tip i wanted to give you here we see this name attribute it's starting from pc always try to change this so don't leave this default let's visualize this go to primitive type name over here let's always change this rename it as wall why save this first and i'll give you one example why and let's take this okay there are just two characters 
and let's uh, give them name attribute as name is string name is string so this is joy we'll name him joy and let's copy this and his name is Chandler okay and we have name attribute on this now let's plug this here let's clean this bit let's give some rotation like this yeah cool so you can see this this bullet solver is reading them as a two object because they have two different names if if two person has same name then for hudni it's one person so we can see this it's showing two person but for for hudni it's one person only. So it will take this into one only let me show you see this right why i told you to always change this because if you are using this material fraction on two geometry it will create name pieces and all those things so always try to change this and never leave this on default and also lots of things are dependent on them like constraint and we will talk about that also in upcoming chapters let's hide this for now okay so this is rbd packed object these are some parameters if you want to give it some velocity in some direction and you can give it here All right so it will take that and angular also and if you if you have already v attribute on this so we can click over here so it will use that let me show you point triangle v is a vector velocity is vector so let's give it on this this curly brackets to assign some value over it let's check this yeah it's taking and if you want to give a rotation then use this w for the rotation yeah it's rotating and let's read this and this and this is the main part of rbd always always check this before simulating so you can see here what is this thing our object is like this but it is convex curve and let me show you what is that convex is it it doesn't take this round shape it always works in this way it will take this it will take this it will take this and that shot we are seeing in the collision guide geometry and we can change it with concave but we don't do that much but it's really time taking right so let's just it will take accurate shape of the geometry when you are dealing with lots of geometry then you can you cannot go for this concave it's expensive and it takes simulation times in fact it gives some thumbs a weird simulation as well so convex hall is very much accurate but how can we use that in this kind of situation so there is one node convex decompose let's just connect this over here and reduce this i think this looks okay to me what it's doing 
it's creating convex hall shape of each pieces but it has one name only joy let me recreate name on them then you will understand what is doing let's use exploded view that's what convex hull is doing it's recreating it's creating convex shape for curvy pieces but it has one name only that's why for rbd it's one object only so this pieces won't shatter let's check this now but still it's one it's not reading and set of com we need to check this off so it can read this and you can see here it's not able to take this geometry why and come down here it's collision padding the, the more you reduce it it will take accurate shape of the and these are slipping threshold which I generally don't change much and let's move to physical and this is the density of the object and rotational stiffness let's increase this what it will do so it will just uh, reduce rotational stiffness of the object if you want to always know about some parameters then you can always multiply it with 100 or 10 that's all bounces you know and friction also and this is what rbd pact is doing and here i don't change all those things much so there are times here number of steps steps is there okay and this is all we require to run a simulation okay so now let's move back to our and delete this let's check this it's taking right name yeah it's taking wall this is fine Let's shut it on. Okay. And here it's all pieces are falling down. But I want to specify this corner pieces shouldn't get active. We have that option create static object. But it will make object completely static. So what we can do over here. To do that there is one attribute which is active active 1 means it's active active 0 means it's static and how do I select this and I want to keep, keep that procedurally so whenever I change the size of this box or something then it, it should read that for that let's use bound Okay, and let's visualize this. Let's take a group. I want to rename it keep active dollar OS so it can stay take this name and it will work on points and here we have this object. Yeah. So it's procedural if I change the size of this in future it will take that I see this it's taking it's increasing so it is called it's procedural okay I want to make this active only and rest of thing should be inactive let's use point triangle active attribute and it should work on this group only I it's integer active equals 1 
now we can go to our spreadsheet to check active also yeah zeros are those things and let's check this in simulation cool and next we will talk about constraints in this chapter we will talk about constraints and let's visualize them and this pink is this pink out is constraint let's visualize it looks like this let's check the attributes of it has some attribute constraint type there are lots of attributes is there and what is constraint we are prefactoring all this but in the real world if we see things are never prefactured it has some internal clue when it hit with something with a certain force it breaks out so same constraint here also so this constraint is glue it will keep those these pieces together now let's rename it as constraint you can change shape of the node and you can assign color from here also okay now let's use this constraint in rvd so to use this we need constraint network it will give error and let's paste that constraint path still it won't it won't read and we we need to assign this over here okay now let's see okay it's still falling why so constraint also has name remember i have told you it's all about name and now let's see what name it's taking if i go to constraint tab it has glue name and to check that in attribute let's go over here constraint name is glue let's give it to glue press the blue yeah we can see this now it won't fall and we need till 720 strength of this constraint so when something hit the wall it will break and now let's create that object to break this wall next in this chapter we will create collision object which will collide with this wall and it will break this and also we will talk about what are these parameters let's create hit object which is sphere let's take sphere take transform to move this question why we are not using this transformation over here and why this so there are few reasons for this when i open this file so i can see this there is a transformation happening over here and also what if i want to make a copies of this sphere and instead of one i want to use two sphere so i can easily make this copy okay so i want to keep it off the screen let's scale this down i don't want this much bigger and 1.7 fine yeah it's fine also make this polygon and increase this size it is fine and here i want to first create name attribute and then pack it the reason i will explain you later so let's take assemble we are not packing this we are just taking image sphere set name 
and take another assemble for pack let's rename it as pack and put out sphere pack shift l for layout alignment and here let's take this rbd pack again and copy this path paste over here let's see this if it's working or not yeah it's working and let's give it some velocity which is z minus let's take minus 10 it's hitting over here minus 15 yeah yeah okay on this real time it's hitting this wall but it's not breaking it why one reason is it has strong glue constraint let's reduce this by one still it's not doing anything okay let's it's zero yes it's working cool and but when I'm doing it one, still it should break it. Let's find out the reason first. Let's click over here. If I middle click over here, it has strength attribute. And where is it coming from? It's coming from RBD material fracture. And let's take a look at it. And let's connect it to constraint now and go to spreadsheet to check the value of strength okay it's showing oh there are too much numbers okay so we have our control here to assign primary strength when i select this it will show me this node over here and which is output one let's pin this okay so it will it will stick to constraint and now let's reduce this okay so we can see there is some variation it should be like thousand over here and this strength variation let's make it zero first okay we can see 5000 over here now select this one it's calculating something in the inside the RBD material it's giving me this output but I don't want to rely on this okay so every time I'm caching over here every time I have to change this recache this and it's long process and this will definitely help me when I'm dealing with lots of geometry but here I have just one wall only so I'm not interested in taking this strength attribute what I am interested over here is constraint name and this name that's all I want I want to delete everything how can I do that there is a clean node over here put this over here disable this and remove all the attribute and groups accept name so this icon is for exclude it will delete everything but it won't delete name cool but i want constraint name also and i can type that over here constraint name and app. but what we can do we can use wildcard entry over here let's use star before and after so you can see this it's taking name and constraint yep so we have deleted everything now let's go over here and check 
प्रेस डब्ल्यू प्ले दिस इट्स वर्किंग नाउ लेट्स इंक्रीज द स्ट्रेंथ बाई टेन नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दिस पैरामीटर्स वॉट दे आर डूइंग वे यू दिस इज स्ट्रेंथ एट्रीब्यूट विच इज द पावर ऑफ ग्लू हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग यू वॉन्ट टू बी होल्ड द जोमेट्री इफ आई इंक्रीज दिस हंड्रेड इट विल ब्रेक लेस इफ आई इंक्रीज इट बाई थाउजेंड ओके and what this this half life is all about when this sphere is hitting this wall it's creating some force on the constraint okay so let's take the real life example over here when something collide with wall or glass so it always creates some force on that object and that force also has some life span which is half life okay so i don't change it much let's move to propagation rate and what this propagation rate is doing over here okay it's hitting over here but it's it will affect this area only and if i make it 1000 also it won't do anything yeah okay let's make it 100 still it's breaking this much area only if i make it infinite number it won't do anything so let's leave it for default what i am interested over here is propagation iteration it depends on this parameters only how much iteration it should do on this object if i make it to it will break and let's to check this quickly hold on this frame and control click on this so we can compare yeah it's spreading it so let's make it 4 yep it's spreading it and now let's reduce this force by 50 and let's check what is doing on default yeah and i want to break this area also so let's increase it by 6 still not breaking by 10 yeah that's all cool so that's all is happening over here and some things you want to see over here we have all this showing guide geometry and all and which you can just take a look at it these are the constraint and we can change color of it if you want make it anything and we can see this overhead with soft and what it will help us and when you are using constraint on animated object or something and it's changing every frame so we don't need this we can check this off it won't affect anything right so now we are clear with the constraint network is and there are other constraint as well hard constraint soft constraint is there but we will use this constraint only for this it's giving good result in next chapter let's enhance this further this looks better at this level but when we break something we get smaller pieces at impact point but here it looks all shapes same and it's where it's sitting it's not creating small pieces i want to define impact position and here pieces should be smaller to achieve that we will use these stakes if you are not aware of these stakes let's understand this in simple way we are directing this movie and this camera is going this way okay so one take is done i want to check this object in second take but everything should be same the camera should be same the camera movement should be same so in this scenario we will use this take okay keep everything same but change this character only let's run this and same we will do for green pig head that's what the basic concept of takes and i'll show you how to use that in hudni 
to find out impact position we need to run this simulation that's one point and also we don't need this wall to collide with and you can see it's going this way everything should be same but this wall should be disabled and it shouldn't seem in this state so let's go over here click on this menu we will use new take so everything is you can see everything is disabled now yeah we cannot change anything and here we have take list let's click over here and double click over here and rename this impact and we are in a second take where we can do anything it won't affect this main take so let's go over here and i want to change this creation frame click over here include in this take control shift click delete this make it zero we can see it's gone and if i switch to main take so we got it right and also there is this auto text is there so if you don't want to use this intake option over here you can just on this and you can make changes the way you want but i will say to avoid this in some cases you may forget on which take you are and you may accidentally change things so that's off that and now let's extract this sphere to do that let's go to main tag and type top input rename it as a rbd sphere and click this and paste over here it's giving some error go to fetch geometry from dom and i want just sphere only we didn't change name of this do it change every time let's take this sphere similar click on this it's showing me one point but in this take it's colliding with the wall also you can check this right it's colliding with wall okay no problem i want to cast this first so let's go over here and let's copy this first and rename it as impact sphere and i want to save this in frames and put dollar f dot over here okay let's save this it saved it right in which take it simulating it's simulating in this main take i want to tell it to use impact take for the simulation and now when i click here we will check this see it's gone now it's not colliding with the wall anymore right and how we can use this data to find out the impact for that we have to go over here let's use add tell it keep point and use trail to create trail line it's giving error because it's taking this previous frame which is zero so let's tell this to evaluate within frame range it won't give error and what is trail length if i go and if i increase this okay it's taking trail of 10 frames but i want to use 70 why 70 because it has 7 frames in the end right and Let's make it procedure use dollar n so it will take this n frame which is 70 and i want to create curve from these points so let's use add 
we name it as create curve you don't have to do anything just go to polygon and use group it will connect all these points by their number if i check over here you can see this it will just connect this by their number every time it will go this way let's highlight hide this and it's moving every frame i'm interested in using in this last frame only so let's use time shift and hold it on last frame only always rename your nodes so if you visit your heap file after decades you will know so what nodes are doing by their name and also when you hand over this file to someone else they will also understand this okay so here we are here we have this side so what my planning is to boolean out some area I'm not able to visualize this. Let's off the texture. I want to extract some area using boolean from this wall, but we need some geometry on this, and I need some radius on this. And for that also we have polywire. It will create geometry on this thing. Okay, and I want to make it procedurally again. Let's take this scale over here and paste over here. And make this rounded by 16. Now let's drop Boolean. I want to use intersect now we have this impact geometry it's hitting these we can use this but I don't need this side so for that let's use surface keep it surface so it won't read as solid object so it will create this side only right and let's use scatter to scatter some points over this and I am okay with 100 and you can middle click on this it has bunch of attributes which I'm not interested in keeping them so let's use our favorite node clean and disable this and remove unused point if I don't disable this it will remove everything because it's not connected any geometry or polygon so let's disable that also remove remove everything let's make some space over here RBD material fracture is a bit heavy at the moment. Let's disable secondary fracture and edge details and this interior details as well. And now let's connect this. It's it won't work. And if you want to make it work, go to primary fracture. There is option over here. Just click this one, it will work. That's all we need. And now we have points on impact. And also I want to increase this radius of impact. So we can just drop extrude. Let's take a look what it's doing. There is one option to increase inset. Right? If I go in minus, you can see it increasing. We can increase it and I'm okay with minus 2. Let's check this. Press W. Now we have enough point on impact area so we don't need much fracture pieces on these sides. So we can reduce that. Let's make it 25 and let's check the changes here.
yeah i want some bigger pieces over here cool and let's change the noise as well yeah and go to secondary let's enable that and it's too much i want to keep it five only and make it three and i don't want to enable this impact point over here because it will create too many pieces on the impact area and now let's go to enable these two yeah because now we should check this now we have lots of smaller pieces so it shouldn't show any broken area or something yeah it's cool and let's check this exploded view also we will understand yeah we have smaller pieces now you can see this now we have smaller pieces on impact area and it's bigger that's what happened in, in real world also now let's catch this go to camera and we can check this and it's not breaking so you already know what to do let's increase this by 20 yeah and i like this pieces is falling over here like this bigger pieces now it's time to add some forces on this next there is atmospherical drag in environment which makes things slow down so here also we will use drag force and drag spin to slow down RBD. Let's take a merge. Rename this as forces and I want to give it some color. This looks fine. Let's take drag connect this and let's reduce it by 001. I don't need any extreme number here and this, this number is fine. Let's check this. yeah and also let's use pop drag spin also make it same point through the room and here we can see this looks fine but you can check these smaller pieces are dancing too much how can we slow down only these pieces and i want to add specific drag for this let's create it let's check go to front view and take line over here Let's merge this. And when this RBD point goes in this line height, I want to add additional drag on this. Let's rename this floor drag guide. We will use wrangle for this. So pop wrangle and go to first frame first. Let's rename this floor drag. And how can we apply it on base what? If I middle click, there is point attribute P, which stores height of this point, where is standing in the 3D world. We will use that and which axis we need is Y. At P dot Y less than 0.3 so if any point goes below this 0.3 this triangle will affect that only so and in fact we can link this also okay let's select this and relative references let's middle click on this 
and check it's working all right and we will type some wrangle over here on what attribute you want to add drag on first is velocity so let's use velocity at v into equals 0.1 for now let's check it's affecting it I know the value is too much but for this testing purpose it's fucking great and one more attribute I want to affect is W we can apply this on that also let's use for rotation 0.1 yeah so it's working now right and I don't want this much value and I think 99 99 is fine 0.99 is work so this is it and it's up to you how much you want to the more you decrease this value the more it will affect that So now it's time for swap with high res geometry. For that, let's delete this now and we will need top input. Let's rename this and click and drag. It's giving error right now, but what do we need over here? We can use this, but these are low res pieces, which is fine for simulation, but for rendering, we need high res for that we will use this transform pieces it requires points so let's use create point to represent objects we have these points and we will use this thing high res geometry and connect this over here it will take everything rotation Let's use play blast. Okay, this is looking nice. And also, always check after adding details on the geometry, do check if it's penetrating or not. Here, I feel like it's penetrating, but it's not. Okay, and if it's penetrating, because if we add too much edge detail. It may give penetration issue after we swap with high res geometry. In this scenario, what you will do, if you want to really use extreme edge noise on the geometry, then you use convex decompose on this. So it can take all those curvature because this thing is not taking that, but this will do, right? and let's use let's out it out wall and let's give it this shade and let's come here remember i have created two assemble one for name and one for pack now here the reason because i want this let's name this fear right i can use this i can use this also but i have to use one more node to unpack this if i because if i mirror click on this it will take one point only and i want this points okay so let's merge this and play blast with textures okay 
and before we render this we have to add inside UVs also so let's add them and we can do anything over here and it won't affect the simulation use unwrap it will affect everything but I want to select specific area only inside just isolate one area only to check okay and let's use our quick shade copy and paste over here here also select this inside uh, I think scale is too much for now let's use gb edit and it should work on inside only let's increase it I think 500 is fine yeah so it can adjust the spacing yeah this looks fine we are using same texture for inside also but you can use inside as different texture and we have that control you know to just change texture over here so let's just remove this test and check on everything yeah it looks proper now we can render this in karma but before that we will try to create similar output using bullet soft solver we have our previous scene here it's creating that active group also and now let's drop rbd bullet solver to run this simulation we need these three inputs over here let's connect them high res constraint and proxy let's disable this for a moment now and let's run the simulation it's working first let's enable the ground and okay now let's run this it's working so what it's doing for simulation it's using this geometry and it's transferring that on this okay it seems like working fine over here and I want to add our sphere in this but how can we add we don't have option to add two geometry over here for that we can do one thing we can merge this and we can use this object for the simulation our network can look very messy in this to maintain clean workflow we can do one thing over here delete this take this rbd solver over here let's disconnect this first we will use object merge and let's rename this rbd pack in and let's give it a green color so what we can do we can just copy and paste over here and if you need object 2 also so if you follow this we can maintain clean network and also in addition we can use this also it will create network box let's rename this as simulation and give it some red color so we can notice it for simulation only and for constraint also we can use this object merge 
connect this and give it this color Just copy paste over here let's save this file and go into a camera now let's run this simulation okay everything is working and our sphere as well and i want to add directional velocity and sphere for that we will use attribute create and rename this v and we need velocity it's a vector we were using minus 15 previously so let's check if it's working now yep it's working now cool and also let's add some forces over here drag and spin which we were using and we can see here it's taking really low value over here which is fine and let's make this collision padding 75 which we were using for the previous we are not using any additional collision over here so let's disable this also it's taking our glue name also by default and now let's visualize our constraint let's go to last step and check yeah constraint is working fine over here and there are some advanced tab as well but we are not going to use them let's save this file and now it's time to enable this thing and the moment we enable this thing this thing won't work let's check right if I disable our constraint network also let's check You can see this is not moving. Let's find out the reason why. For that we have to merge these two. If I media click on this it's showing me mismatch attribute which is active. So this one has active but this doesn't have active. So when we are using object merge this is also doing the same thing which is merge is doing and this thing doesn't have active so it will transfer that active attribute on this but it will keep it as zero let's check that see it's zero and one more tip i want to show you when we were using create attribute it's showing me two option one is default and second is value so what is this is about when it will fall into like this condition so rather than making that value 0 we can specify over here so let's make it 1000 so when we merge this you can check this everything has a 1000 that's what default is doing but here if we check actives default is 0 so that's why it's reading as 0 and now let's correct that let's go here and I need one more attribute which is div which is integer and I want to this value to be 1 ok now let's check yeah it's working why it's hiding because its default number is thousand and it's moving in a thousand velocity so make it zero first and now let's check yep it's working and now let's go to camera and it's time to introduce our constraint Yeah, it's working now.
let's make our strength 50 half life 0.1 and interesting to be 10 yeah let's make some more changes now make it 20 that's yeah, breaking it so now we have achieved almost similar output over here and i want to break this area also now let's check why it's not breaking okay so here we can see it's inactive over here and i want to make this area specifically active what we can do over here so we are in this situation like this and i want to really add direct this thing and for this we can do some manual work okay now let's do that this won't be procedural work press alt and copy this disconnect all we will put a box over here active this area only and for that we can use box and I can move this view over here but I don't want to do that what I do generally do is go to selection select this press T so it will put this gizmo over here and we can extract that value so where it is in, in the 3D space so let's just copy this edit work is done so delete it and paste over here so it can take that position right and now let's merge this and use okay now it's taking that and i don't want to create two groups we can do that if i can just use another group but i want to create one group only so for that let's use this copy and paste over here first it will just replace that group but we can use union with existing so now we can see we have and in fact we can just increase this we can just use this network and name it we will understand its manual work and give any color you like and let's move this a bit over here okay cool now let's check yeah i think we will settle with this and it's looking fine now okay so it's time to swap with high res geometry so if we go to this last simulation point and we have those points check so we will use transform pieces And for high res also, we can do the same. Paste RBD HQ. Just copy this wall, paste over here. And same for the sphere as well. Just rename it as sphere. Copy this, paste over here. Now let's check our simulation. Yeah. And you can see this on the ground, pieces are rotating too much. And you know what to do. Now let's do that here also. 
let's use our favorite popper angle let's check this now the rotation is reduced if you want to reduce this more so you can just decrease this I keep it 9 and keep it 90 only now let's check yeah and I think it's too much for now let's keep it in between so that's it it's just a basic overview and we can I wanted to show you just we can use similar kind of output and now we know how to use RBD bullet solver and let's render this using karma Before rendering this, let's cache RBD points. Rename this. Load from disk and cache this. So we have this cache over here. Right? And now to render this in karma we won't find this in out and for that we have to go to stage it's called salaries we will import our geometry over here so let's import first we can use shop import to do that let's read wall and it's still beta so it's it will give some viewport error we can which you can see over here some things are not moving it's viewport error ignore that and our favorite frame is 15 so we can use this shop import to import all of geometry but you can see this it's a bit buggy and it give motion blur error also so we won't use this and let's go to geometry and our wall we will use usd export its full form is universal scene description and we will use this to export our geometry to Celeris. so let's rename this and also go to export tab and we will use cache we will create separate folder for USD and dollar OS is fine. Yep. For now we will cache one frame only. We will test some look and all on this. So let's save this. Save this file and go to staging. And we will use reference. Okay scroll down and we have this file reference and go to our dollar heap cache and this is our usd folder and select this and now let's rename this wall control plus any button you want so i will use control plus 2 the quick mark is set for usd i'll use control 1 so when i press 2 quickly change things over here okay so now let's use sphere save this and press 1 and copy this We'll rename this sphere I also read sphere yep and we can just merge this 
it's visible over here now we are in the perspective so we will need camera let's import our camera connect this over here so now we have already camera set at object level so what we can do we can just copy this parameter over here paste relative references copy rotation now let's go to camera there is aperture problem and we can see it's showing horizontal aperture is 20 right now but we have we have 41 so you copy this also paste over here and I want 720 only so our camera is set and next we will create lights for this okay so we need ground also let's create it Check geometry use these knobs give it some radius we will use transform to control this press L rotate this way and scale this up give it some color here also we will use USD to export this save this and let's import that into auxiliaries copy this yep before creating lights let's see how it's looking and to check how it will look in karma we don't have to drop any node over here for now we can go to here and click we can just use this karma beta so let's check if I click so this is our render output okay now let's switch to GL and create lighting and create one light from this angle click on this distant control click and lock this scene so we can just move our scene over here right so, and unlock this and go to our camera view and now we have light in the scene and if I go to base property we have this parameters we can change the color of light or intensity let's check for a moment how it will looking in the render and I want to increase intensity by 3 yeah this one is looking nice and let's add dome light also just connect this and yeah we can see this and go to base properties let's give it some texture go to stri and select any anything you want now it's time to create shaders to assign material on this we need material library let's connect this and go inside now we can use any material we want so we will use goodness default principal shader 
yeah one for wall let's minimize everything we won't make any changes for now on this because i want to visualize how it will look and now we have to assign shaders on this geometry so let's use assign material and here we will put this path over here so let's just assign wall go to material and use wall ground material let's save this scene and check how it's looking yeah it's looking good and we can instantly make changes over here let's go here and i want dark shading on the ground and there should be no reflection and i am not able to visualize sphere at the moment for that let's disconnect this wall for the sphere i don't need any reflection on that is fine so these two are done and now let's connect our wall again should be first now let's add texture to our wall i don't want any reflection on that and for base color 0.5 is quite better for now and let's go to texture tab and here we will click on use texture and we can go to our heap texture and select this wall so our texture also working over here and and i want to increase intensity of our light let's make it 6 So this looks fine, and we can do one thing over here. Let's go to our object level, and let's hide other objects. And I want to make some difference in out surface and inside surface. For that, let's take one piece for the test. Let's assign some color over here. Point five is fine. Copy this. We have two option. We can make our inside. right let's select inside first yeah and also i want to show you something let's use red and we can check it's not taking the geometry properly because it's working on this point if i make it primitive and here also i have to make it primitive and then it will take this proper and for inside surface and we can make this bright and also this let's and disable this delete use l go to camera 
yeah it's looking quite better over here press this frame press one and check how it will look okay our outside surface is looking a bit really dark at the moment so let's make it six by six let's make it point six or maybe point seven this difference is five so at least we will know that uh, I think point six five is fine yeah so we can see there is like some difference over here cool and now let's cast this that one yep this looks better and next we will use karma to render this let's drop karma rename this render and now go to hodni gl let's set path over here we will render this in exr and camera is selecting its proper and we have this motion blur option over here and we have this pixel sampling which is fine and we are not going to change anything over here and everything looks and let's keep everything default and let's just check this one frame how it's looking to render this we have to click over render to m play so it will we can just check how much time it's taking for one frame and everything Okay, so render is here and I think it's looking good and we can see this inside inside faces is bright almost two minutes two and a half minutes to render this and if you want to optimize some render time you can reduce these samples and you can disable motion blur also but I am fine with this and and before rendering this let's go over here and cast this in sequence and same for the sphere also let's go to staging and check this frame it's if it's taking motion blur or not yeah it's taking motion blur all looks okay so we can just stop this and before rendering this let's fix something if i go to this frame and let's check this pieces are going inside grid and let's increase the size make it 30 This is fixed now and let's save this and and we can render this now select this and render to disk while wall is rendering let's quickly summarize what we have learned in this lesson let's maximize this We have unwrapped wall and we have used quick shade to assign texture for the viewport. And we are using this Arduino material to fracture this. And we are not using this primary strength and everything here. And let's come to this pack. We have packed our proxy geometry. Let's immediately click on this and check so we can see this. 
and always check name attribute never leave this default and we are using this group to make inactive some points and here let's go to our rbd doc here we are using rbd pack object to import our proxy and and we reduced collision padding to to get better shape of our proxy geometry and always check this collision geometry before simulation and here we have used glue constraint and added some force and also we have add floor drag also where we wanted to control floor pieces only let's go back and also we have find impact position with the help of takes and don't try to create any nodes in this takes always create nodes in main take only and we are transferring our high res pieces using transform pieces and we have export our geometry using ust export let's go to our celeris and we have import using this reference camera lights material and we have rendered this let's check wall render next This looks better for RBD1 but this piece looks bit weird because of shadow and it's slowly coming out. To fix this kind of behavior we can increase glue or propagation iteration. And if you change anything in simulation to fix this it may affect our simulation entirely. And I'm quite happy with the simulation. I, I don't want to change the entire simulation, but I want to fix this minor problem only. And there is a way to fix this post simulation. And let's quickly fix that. Go to last frame. And these pieces are giving problem. So go to selection and use name. Now select them only. And use split. And we have select this small piece by mistake. So let's deselect that. Control. Enter. Let's use time shift. And freeze it on start frame. And now let's merge this. It's fixed. Without affecting the entire simulation. So what can you do if you want to improve this? I would say maybe you can increase sphere count. It's hitting wall at different time. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and hope you learn some new stuff and see you next time